this is Angie from Angie's Garden. Welcome to vlog number seven. We're down on the allotment today getting some jobs done. It's middle of February. Um, it's grey but it's mild. Um, we're expecting a lot more cold weather yet though so not much in the way of planting going on. Today I'm going to be sowing some peas and some sweet peas and um, they'll be inside for now. We're also moving the polytunnel that blew, that blew away um, and we've decided to make that into a brassica cage so we're moving that into position we'll be a while before we get the net in we need to save up but for now at least it'll be where it's going to go and we're also moving some old compost daleks that i don't really use anymore because i've made a compost bay um, but i really need more compost on the allotment so my plan is to fill these up with manure so they can compost down over the season but use the space still by growing my squash into the top of them. So fingers crossed that'll work really well. Um, I've got my two middle children with me today and they're barrowing manure at the moment, so it'll be really helpful. So yeah, so hope you enjoy watching us, what we do on the allotment today and please subscribe and thanks for watching. We've been wondering what to do about the polytunnel that blew over in the wind. I'm nervous of putting it back up as a polytunnel in case it just blows away again. So taking some inspiration from another plot, I've decided to turn it into a brassica cage. This is one that seems to work really well and I reckon we can build one similar. The first task will be to move the frame, removing the bits that are broken and put it into position. Hopefully it fits in the bed really well. next job was preparing this bed by removing some plants. There was some American land cress in here and some garlic and a couple of kale plants as well. We removed those to make room for the compost daleks that we're going to fill with manure and then grow squash in later in the year. I'm really pleased that four compost daleks fit in here really well and even leaves a bit of room down the side for a couple of courgettes. So here's the Daleks in position, they're not the prettiest but hopefully once they're covered with squash they'll look gorgeous. Um, my son's been doing a really good job filling them up. We get free manure on site so this is what we're using to fill them and hopefully we'll not only have a nice place for the squash to grow because they like that really rich soil but also by the end of the season I'll have lots and lots of compost. going to be sowing some peas and some sweet peas. I grew some beautiful sweet peas last year after many fails, finally got it right and I found that for me sowing in the spring is the best way forward. I've had no success sowing in the autumn, I know a lot of people do but it just doesn't work for me. So I'm going to be sowing my sweet peas into these modules and I'm going to be sowing my peas into this gutter and um, this is 
a really good way of sowing peas because they don't like root disturbance. So by sowing them into this, you can literally then slide it out into the place where you want them to grow. You just dig a trench, slide it into the trench. I'm gonna sow my peas here, even though I do have a bit of a mouse problem, especially at this time of year. So any peas, beans, broad beans, whatever that I sow, um, they just get eaten. So what I found works really well is I soak my seed, my pea seeds first, in some water with chilli powder in, you can see there. So these have just been soaking overnight. The chilli powder seems to stop the peas wanting to eat them. It must make them taste different, I don't know. Um, or, I don't know, put them off the scent maybe. And then once these are sown, I'll also put them up in the polytunnel, kind of on a hanging shelf, and that way it's more difficult for the mice to get to them anyway. With the peas, um, I can literally just pour these on and then show you. So they, they might as well have the chilli powder on there as well. Um, so with the peas, I'm going to try and do them in, if you imagine on a dice, a number five. So four and then one in the middle. It doesn't have to be like this. The idea really is just you want a decent spread so that as the plants grow, their roots will make a mat um, so that when you slide it out, it's really easy to slide out. Also, they're just nice and evenly spaced, which is pleasing. Um, but if you've got a few too extra, you know, a few too many, just pop them in. You can also just kind of spread them around. So that's what I'm doing here. I think by pre-soaking them as well, it gets them to grow a bit quicker. They give them a bit of a head start, as it were. So just spreading all these around. As you can see, I'm not being too exact about the number five spacing, but just there or thereabouts. Okay, and I reckon that'll do. So if I just show you there, there we go, all the peas. Um, and then I'm just gonna cover that up with a bit more compost. And these will be ready to go on that hanging shelf, which I'll show you in a minute. These are Alderman variety and I found they do really well early in the season. They're a good kind of all round pea. Okay, that's good to go. So I'll just go on the shelf and get watered. <laughs> shelves that I put up in the polytunnel. They're just fastened up with some string as you can see to the bar and a bit of old skirting board to make the shelf and this will hopefully keep my peas free from mice. So the other thing that I'm sowing are my sweet peas. So I've done the same with these as I did to the peas. I've soaked them in chilli, just a, a teaspoonful of chilli powder in some water overnight. And I'm going to be trying to sow these one into each module, two at the most, and then they have plenty of room to grow, plenty of room to spread. And I won't need to disturb the roots when I plant them out. Um, peas and sweet peas and things don't like the root disturbance, as I said before. So 
I don't want to be over sewing and then having to prise them apart. Um, I just want to be able to take the module and plant it straight out. Root trainers are really good for these as well, but I think these will be deep enough for today. So, just get rid of my uh, chilly water a little bit so I can see where my seeds are this time. Okay, so as you, you can see in there, they're really well soaked. Some of them are starting to split the husks already. So, if I empty them onto one of these. Okay, I've got plenty there, so I think two to a module I'm going to get away with. So, just diagonal and pop them in just about. As a general rule of thumb, I try to plant seeds at double their size in depth. That seems to work for me. Um, obviously, some seeds go against that rule if they need a bit of light for germination, but these I'm going to go at double their depth. I saw a really good quote this week from Monty Don that said, gardening is easy. If you plant things the right way up, they'll generally grow. And that's true. Some things are a nightmare, but most things, they will grow. Okay, I think I'm gonna have a few too many seeds here. I might need some more pots afterwards. So these were um, a variety that I grew last year called Blue Ballerina and they were just brilliant. They had really strong stems, really long stems. They flowered the whole summer. Um, they were really, really beautiful, really nice scent as well. So I'm hoping I get some more of those this year. Okay, so that's those. So I'll just pop them on here and I'll find some more pots for them. Just cover those over. Hopefully, the mice won't be interested. Some people put chicken wire over as well. That, that also can help if you've got a mouse problem. Or squirrels. I do use a lot of chicken wire on my bulbs in the garden. Okay, and that's done. So I'll pop a label on those. Fingers crossed we'll have sweet peas this summer. So if you've been watching my videos, you're going to know that I've set up a grow box at home in one of my cupboards with a grow light and some heat and um, I've been starting off my chilies in there but I also thought I'd start off some other things and this has had varying success um, I started off my leeks shallots and some perennial bunching onions in here and as you can see those are looking really good they're not too leggy and those will now be moved into the greenhouse to carry on growing for a bit longer before I divide them up. So I'm happy with those. Um, the broad beans have gone a bit leggy with the heat. Um, so that's my broad beans at the minute. Now, ideally, these would be kind of bushier, but I think they're going to be OK. I'm going to just let them grow on. Now they're back in the cool greenhouse. Hopefully that will help them to slow down the growth a bit and get a bit leafier. So that's those. Something that has gone very leggy in the grow box has been the pak choy. So these ones at this end that look like overgrown cress, those are the pak choy. Now those are very leggy. Um, there are a few that are less leggy. I'm gonna try and salvage some by just planting them deep into individual pots. Um, and then next to those that are much smaller are some lettuce. So those look great. I'm just going to leave those a little bit longer and then prick those out maybe next week. But these are also coming to live in the cool greenhouse now as well. So. I've got some bigger modules. Which I'm just going to fill with some compost. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some holes into these modules. They're relatively deep. Okay, 
and I'm going to just lever out some of this pak choy. I'm growing pak choy because it's very happy to grow in cool weather, not freezing weather, but cool. So it'll be happy in the polytunnel really early on. Right, so as you can see, the roots are very small and the stem is uh, weak and very tall. So what I'm going to do is plant that nice and deep into there and hopefully I'll show you there that will stabilize the plant and it'll grow on strong from this point. So if you are starting off pak choy or anything that goes really leggy rescue it as soon as you can. Um, it's a fine balance between getting your seeds to germinate early and giving them everything they need and not getting them to grow too quickly. I'm going to have loads of micro here which are not going to get used sadly but just because I don't really have space for so many plants. I think that's the thing with seeds you you always think oh it just doesn't seem very many when you're sowing them but that one's a bit too leggy even for doing that with I think. Okay. Okay so because I'm going to have quite a lot of plants here I'll probably put some of these others into a trough and we'll, instead of getting mature plants, we'll use it as a cut and come again salad. I think that'll be a good way to use up these little plants rather than them go to waste. But yeah, these aren't looking too bad once they bounce them in. Nice little tray of pak choy. And I'll just see if I have a trough that would be suitable for this. Okay, so I don't have a trough, but I do have this tray, and I think that would be absolutely fine. So we just put a little bit of compost in there. So I'm going to put the rest of these pak choy into this tray. I'm just going to make some drills to pop the plants into. I think three in there. Now when you're doing cut and come again plants you don't really need to worry about the space in the same because the plants you're not expecting them to grow to maturity. So I'm just going to lay these along and these might give us some salad quite early on. You can use lots of different um, seeds for salad leaves. You, know, you don't have to just stick to the lettuces. You can use these oriental greens like pak choy, and mizuna, mabuna and things like that. Um, but you can also use, if you have a lot of broccoli seeds or kale seeds, they make really good mini salad leaves as well. Apart without breaking them because they're so leggy. Just cover them over like that. They should straighten up as they grow. Not 
obviously if you've had a deeper trough this would work a bit better with the leggy seedlings but work with what you've got and all that this I'll just mix out of there. I'm just going to see how this grows over the next few weeks. I will keep it inside because we're due some really frosty weather so it's not really worth the risk of leaving things outside at the moment especially when they've been used to the warmth of the house. I'm nearly there. You can come in sweetheart if you want. I'm just putting these into here because I grew too many and there's loads of leggy seedlings so I'm just making this little box that maybe they'll grow into some salad leaves for us instead. Hmm. What, what type are they? Pactory. Oh, they have nice yellow flowers. They do get nice yellow flowers, don't they? If you leave them to the seed. They would be a... I've got these with pea seeds when you put them in chili. They are. I did them already. I keep taking this one out. That should be in there. One more. See if we can fit that. Okay, that will do. Okay, there we go. One of the Daleks that we moved had some compost in it so I'm using this just to top up one of my beds so that I can relocate the American landcress that we moved from the bed where the Daleks went. It's all a bit of moving things around today but hopefully it'll maximise the plants we have and the space. Landcress is a great little winter salad. It's really tasty. It self seeds easily. So once you have it in the garden, you're almost guaranteed to always have it. Okay, so I just want to show you this. It's some garlic that I dug up. This is what happens if you leave garlic in the ground um, over a couple of years. This was one clove, which I didn't harvest and left in the ground. So as you can see, it's now shooting into lots of individual plants so you could leave this and just use the shoots um, in your cooking or you can do what I'm going to do which is to prise them apart and replant them and each of those will become a bulb of garlic so I'm going to put them in this bed that I've already put the American landcress in maximize the space
polytunnel that is now going to be the brassica cage in position it fit perfectly in the bed so that was a win um, eventually we'll get some netting to go over it and i'll form a kind of door and we'll be planting our brassicas in there so our kales cabbages broccolis and hopefully keeping off the cabbage whites plus it'll be great because it's tall enough for them to grow and for us to walk in and tend to them so that'll be really awesome um, we've done quite a few other bits and bobs today, so I'm pretty pleased with progress. But it's time to go home now because England are playing in the rugby this afternoon. So we need to get home, get washed up and get the snacks out. See you later. Bye. Once I was back at home, I decided to give the chicken run a bit of a spruce up for spring. I clean over the house with a mixture of vinegar and water so it's safe for the girls. There are lots of cobwebs to clean off. I just give it a bit of a one saver and then once a year we use the jet wash to give it a really good clean. <laughs> 